to the Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. It is. I can film that. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm your host, Jackie Liang, and welcome back to the first ever Baby Secondary School Late Afternoon Show, an idea we had at 3 a.m. after our fifth cup of coffee. Now, with any idea we have in 3 a.m., it's, it's bound to have a lot of challenges and things that we're missing. I don't know, a table, uh, a good script, a reasonable budget. Uh, we don't have good enough... Actors? You know, good actors. We don't have enough communist propaganda in this. Are all things that we are missing on this show. However, we progress through our things. So here we have our, our co-stars, uh, my co-host here, Ivan Ochinikov. Uh, he's going to be uh, our interviewee. For, he's going to be joining us today for... Whoa, wait, what happened? Ah, uh, I see. So I guess we have uh, got the wrong actors here. Oh Here's the, the, the real but, but the Ivan Ochinikov. The, the dog doesn't know how to talk. But the dog is cute. So after minutes of research, gallons of coffee, and, you know, having the will to actually get up in the morning, get up this morning, we finally get to see, the, for the first time ever, three idiots talking in front of this very nice-looking brick wall about current events. And this brick wall here, I've named George, and he's now my best friend. God, I'm so lonely. But things are about to change. As school will start around, I don't know, 8th, 9th, 10th, I don't really know at this point, but for the first time in six months, we will finally see, um, we will finally see our, the foreheads and eyes of our best friends. But nothing else, because the masks will be an essential part of what, essential part of our school life. Now, the masks are going to be a, a, a pretty good addition for many people's lifestyles. But if you have trust issues, well, good luck with that. Because if you're, if you're thinking that your friends uh, might say something behind your back under those masks, well, good luck. They probably will be. bad mouthing you? Maybe. Consulting this amazing reopening protocol? Most definitely. And speaking of which, let's talk about that. How amazing is this actual Great. protocol? And I'm sure that a lot of people are going to be super confused as to what the protocol actually will be. And, you know, the protocol itself is pretty pretty self-explanatory. You know, you go, to, you go to only one class a day, but only if you roll a d20 and has a uh, uh, blue eyes white dragon on your defense. But if your wing spike is on fifth position, then you just don't go to school and you have to move three steps forward and sell your life. It's really self-explanatory to be honest. So you really gotta look into the positives here, you know, like the masks, the, there's a really great positive in this case, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's time. Yeah, go, go, go. Yep. Goodbye. You're getting replaced again. Anyways, the mask is a really good addition to people's lifestyles, you know? Because I don't even have to take care of myself when I wake up. I don't care if I wake up like a deformed blobfish. I just have to cover it up, you know? Like, most people don't even have to shave, right? I only have to take care of my forehead and my eyes. It's a really, really nice addition to my mornings. If I even do wake up in time for morning, because I usually just, you know, many people just wake up at like, I don't know, six in the afternoon. But it's just in time for dinner. But, you know, who doesn't like to walk around like some sketchy drug dealer around your school, you know, just... But, you know, it really blends yourself in when everyone looks like a sketchy drug dealer. But, jokes aside, we really need to keep our masks on during school hours. And even when you're outside, do please keep your mask on. Unless you want me to take a giant circle around you, which is going to be awkward for both of us. So please do not do that. And please don't be one of those jerks who is throwing some parties in their houses right now. Because I'm going to be avoiding you for another reason. And that is a lack of brain cells. But that's a little too dark. So let's just take it back to a lighter level and talk about something in the more positive light. Which is introducing our co-host, uh, Ivan Ochnikov celebrating our three minute anniversary of the show for the, uh, the show has been running for a whole three minutes that is more than my will to live anyways here comes Ivan Ochnikov welcome I Ivan I need to practice more I don't have enough stamina you've been lacking on your slacking yes. on your practices your piccolo practices huh exactly so, uh, this coronavirus situation is really taking a toll on this like whole school situation, you know, like, what is the Music Council going to be doing? Like, how does the Music Council even work anyways? Well, you know, Music Council, the important part to understand about is why, why does it even exist? What does it even do? And let's start with a really basic thing. Unlike a lot of other councils in our school, which will stay unnamed, Music Council is actually oh, useful. Okay, battery's dead. Unlike... Every, almost every single council in the school, 
and you know which one I'm talking about, that one will stay unnamed, we actually do something. The music department, it's not just an amalgamation of bands and ensembles. We have concerts, we have performances, and all of that needs support and organization. And that is what the Music Council does. And from anything as complex as organizing a whole annual concert, we have two actually, uh, to like putting labels on instrument cases, someone needs to do that. It's not just going to be done by itself. Well, that's boring. So how is Music Council actually structured? Well, the Music Council has co-presidents and then it has four pods, each with a leader. The four pods are performance and events. Those guys, well, they really, they don't do that much except for all the stuff the day of the show. That's where they become super important and they are because that's me. Um, <laughs> we are because that's me. Uh, they do all of the stage stuff and essentially everything that happens the day of the show. Then we have Social Pod, which deals with, you guessed it, social events. So that's stuff like Grade 9 Social we have at the beginning of the year, uh, end of the year banquet, uh, Java Drive and Pie, which is our coffee house type thing. It's actually really nice, you should check it out. Um, and the rest of the year when that isn't happening, they just kind of help around with other pods. Um, so question doing nothing, yes, no? questionable who's better, Pep or Social. I'd still say Pep. Now, uh, then we have Outreach. Generally, no one knows what they do, but I have some inside information from their pod leader who told me that they do something with auctions, raffles, selling merch. We actually have a lot of music merch. We have really great sweatpants. Um, and finally, we have our last pod, which is the media pod. Which is... Basically kind of, just me. Basically yeah, absolutely. basically just me and, and the camera person over there. Yeah. I lost my job because the camera died. <laughs> <laughs> we we kind of do, just, they just do videos. That's yeah, basically. Video. Well, that seems like a very tight, like, pyramid scheme, yeah, yeah you know? <laughs> that seems like a very tight, like, leadership. Like, how does that manage? Like, yeah. Well, actually, just to deal with that kind of problem, we have created committees. A committee is essentially a substructure. Um, in, in, in kind of replacing a pod because in a pod you go there to specialize in doing a specific type of thing uh, But that's not the only stuff you can do It's just a specific job that needs actual training that someone needs to know how to do uh, Otherwise, you're free to do really anything any any available working council. And there's quite a bit That's why we have committees when there is some kind of task that needs to be done uh, We assign a committee leader and then it's like a separate substructure that deals with that specific task so in that case Quite literally, anyone can be a leader, and this is something that isn't done in quite literally any other club at Bayview, where anyone, no matter your age or experience, if you're skilled enough, um, you can do essentially anything. Well, that's some propaganda for you. Thank you very much, Ivan Ochinikov, for joining us today. Uh, you know, we just wanted to, you know, in the spirit of uh, plagiarism, we wanted to invite more guests on the show to copy, uh, you know, James, James Oliver, James Conan O'Brien. Conan O'Brien, you know, in the spirit of Bayview and the spirit of plagiarism, Not Fallon, we will talks. Yep, we will be interviewing one of the founders of Mystic Studios, Yu Ming He, which will be taking my chair because we didn't bring enough chairs out here because that's how we roll, baby. So let's welcome everyone, Yu Ming He. I'm getting out of here. Goodbye. That 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 hurt less than Did the you get a mosquito with that? <laughs> yeah, that was a mosquito. And once again, this is the show. So, what's your name? Uh, you Ming? Do you have anything to say before we begin? Um, why didn't I get my own mic? Because we have exactly two microphones and you don't get one. Also, like this, I can quite literally control you speaking. Nope. Uh. uh nope. Okay. So, uh, if you didn't do anything, would Jackie and I feel any difference? Um, yes. Um, like what? You won't have a cute dog on the show. That's probably the only reason why you're here. Uh, so now let's go to the Blitz portion of the interview where I'm going to ask you a lot of uh, quick questions. Hopefully, I remember what they are. Now, what's your name? Yu Ming. I thought I already told you that. I have a short memory. I'm sorry. What's your name again? Uh, Yu Ming. And this is Honey. She is a toy poodle. We're going to quickly Which stop to interview the dog. Mm -hmm. That's very informative. Thank you. Um, but I, we might want to report that to the police later. As I have been saying, let's move on to the blitz portion of the interview. 
Are you ready? Yes. A lot of fast questions. Yes. All right. What did you have for breakfast? Nothing. That doesn't sound like a healthy choice. Why? Didn't feel Do you hate yourself? No. Is that why you didn't have breakfast? No. Why? Didn't feel like it. Why didn't you feel like it? That sounds very unhealthy. I woke up late, so I didn't eat. All right. What's your favorite sport? Ultimate Frisbee. How does that relate to you being our camera girl? I can chuck the camera as far as farther than you guys can. Uh, when was the last time you had to do that? Um, uh, a few days ago. Why did you do it? To get that nice aerial shot. <laughs> All right. Uh, how does you being a camera girl in any way relate to your job as associate producer doing various tasks and duties? Uh, I tell you guys what to do. Uh, do you really? Yes. Uh, thanks for actually telling us what you do now. Uh, that was very helpful. We can actually now... Um, the most power in this uh, trio. Sure you do. Yes. The most power in a trio is always the guy with the suit. Let's start with that. Make that clear. <laughs> All right. Uh, and also, it's also the guy who brought the suit, which is once again me. Well, I brought the camera. And I pulled the homeless person off the street and took his equipment. So without me, you guys won't even be able to have this show. Once again, let's stop for a quick sponsorship. <laughs> We would like to thank our sponsor, Ryan Mark, the random stranger who just happened to walk past the school with all of the equipment that we needed to film this. Including a tripod and another camera. So, being the rational people that we are, we just took it, and uh, fortunately he's not here right now, but... Which, well, him not being here is why we have the equipment. <laughs> but, yes, uh, thank you to Ryan Mark for sponsoring this show, even though he didn't want to sponsor us. We would also like to thank our second sponsor, Dollarama. They, br they brought us this hat and this sound maker. Please give us money because we don't actually have a contract with you, but we would love to have one. And do you feel like this is the end of this interview? Uh, no. Well, it is, and this is all the attention you get, so please. Congratulations on your graduation. Whoa, wait, wait. That was the last video. Anyways, nothing changes because you have to do one thing. Gotta subscribe, hit the thumb button down below, the bell one, and